Welcome to, I guess, part two of the function transformations. I have done part one uh, exactly on this topic, bringing you the quadratic parent function and then doing all the transformations uh, on it. So the, the link I'll put up, up above, okay, if you wanna see part one again. Now for part number two, I'm going to take some other parent functions and uh, it's not restricted just to these. You can do it on uh, many different functions to try to see, and then the pattern kind of repeats itself. So for these function transformations, what we have is we have an input um, x, and then we have some parent function, as you can see there, so f of x in the box, so right here. Now the parent function can be, now I'm gonna just kind of work on these. This is one that we've already studied. So I'll do a little short review and then we're gonna dive into some of these to see that basically the pattern just keeps repeating. And once you have your parent, you know, you can take your function and your output um, and then plot it if you like. So our interest is going to be, you know, what happens if you are going to kind of multiply your function by some constant a and it's either positive or negative. Um, what happens if you actually multiply your input by some constant b, so again, positive or negative? Um, what if you kind of translate or shift your input by some h, and what if you translate or shift your output by some constant k? Now, just to um, refresh you, so when we were dealing with these, and I took the quadratic function. So I'm going to kind of graph it again for you. And so what we did was we took this um, parent function in terms of your quadratic, and then we wanted to see what would happen as we kind of change and again, multiply it by A, uh, multiply the input by B, and then start translating the input or the output by H or by K. And what we saw was when we had the A, you know, and as we kind of shift it over as it got bigger, so it basically stretches out your output or possibly compresses it, okay, so depending on what your value is. It can also do a reflection, so an entire reflection as you see right there, if your A becomes negative, and you know, if it becomes bigger negative, it starts to stretch it in that Y direction as well. So we saw that happening. We also saw, so within the B, so kind of the same thing in terms of your compressions there. So as you make the B bigger, um, it compresses the X in this direction, which kind of looks like the Y is getting stretched out. All right, so that's what happens there. Um, and if your B gets smaller, all right, so it stretches out your, um, input x so it kind of stretches it out in this direction, the parabola, which again is kind of like compressing your output in that direction. So that was our b, so again it's stretching or compressing to do with that. And then your h and your k um, was great because all it did was it just shifted, so the h just shifts the inputs, all right, so to the left and to the right, depending if it's negative or positive. So that's what we saw there. And then your K is gonna be shifting things up and down. And now we wanna be able to change this up and try to do it with some other functions. Um, and now, so that was the first one that we worked on and that was basically all of part number one. Now for part number two, so I'm gonna take these ones and we'll take for instance the square root of X and now we're gonna be playing around um, to try to see what happens. Okay, so again, so deja vu, if we have, so this entire, so I'm gonna duplicate it, gonna put it below in here, and this A, okay, so this right here, so we know that that compresses, again, compresses, or it stretches, your output, okay, so either this direction or stretches it out, you have your B, so that again, now instead of your output, your B basically does exactly the same thing, so I'm gonna put this, which means the same thing, except it does it to the input, 
all right? Um, does it kind of in reverse because now the input, so if you're saying it's stretching it out, so you know it's kind of going in this direction, compressing it means it's kind of squeezing okay, it in. Now these ones, so this H is a translation, so this just translates okay, your input by that H, and then this right here um, translates, so the same thing, but it does it to the output, so it moves it up or down. And that's what we wanna be able to see with all of the other um, functions. So if I take, so for instance, if now my function is this, all right, and now all I want it to do first, okay, is basically play around to see if I multiply it by A, which would mean if I multiply this by A, so multiplying this by A, so it's gonna look something like that, so that's gonna be my first um, kind of checkpoint. And so let's do that. So if I bring back decimals, I'm gonna now switch these. So let's make this the square root of X. And so that means we gotta change this thing around as well. And remove all of this. So you can actually see it, how to input it in as well if you wanted to do that. So I'm gonna do this and then X minus H. Okay, so you're gonna see that. So my A and again, so let's make all of these. So my K first, let's put it at zero. My H will put it at zero. And then my B is gonna be at one and A is at one. So my A, so again, so notice, if we make A bigger than one, right? It should stretch this thing out. Okay, so let's see if that's happening. Indeed, that's what happens, right? It stretches this square root parent right out. I'm gonna do it like this, okay? So that's what happens there. Now, between zero and one, it should start compressing it down. So let's see if that happens, okay? So that's one, and now, okay, we're gonna start going, okay, notice compressing it in that direction. So that's your A. Now, what happens if it's negative, right? It should do a reflection back. Okay, so it should do a reflection back and notice that's exactly what happens. So it starts to reflect back and then it just stretches or compresses it down depending on how big that A is. So that's great. So that aligns with exactly what we had. Okay, so sorry, we had that. Now, what about my B? So for my B, so what we want, now what we're gonna say is, okay, so we had A, but what if you know we multiply our input by a b? So what does that mean here? So here's my input. So this is my input. Okay, so my input there. So what that would mean is, so that's my a still. So that's all a. Now my input is now supposed to be bx. All right, so that's what I have there. And now let's see what happens. So again, we should have a compression and a stretching. Right, so either you know it's going to compress it this way, which means it kind of stretches it in the Y, okay, or it's going to stretch this thing out, okay, which is going to be compressing in the Y, but com but stretching it out in the X. So let's see if that happens here. So that's my B, okay. So let's go down and make it smaller. So let's see if it's stretching it out, okay. Indeed, so it's kind of pulls it back out, okay. So that means that my when I say it pulls it back out, so it, you know, so if you have, this is your square root, that's your parent, okay? So it's basically is going to stretch it kind of in this direction because it's going like this, okay? So it's just trying to push these things in that direction. So that's what you have there. And now let's go back in here. So if I now make it bigger and bigger, so notice now if it's over one, okay, it's going to now, try to bring it back in, okay, in, in the X direction, so in this this direction. So notice it's gonna just keep doing that. And then if you make it negative, so this is something that we didn't necessarily see with the quadratic, because quadratic, we square it, right? So the negative values for the input, nothing happened. But here, if we make this negative, so look what happens there. So as you make this negative, okay, so it kinda goes, B is zero, so that means everything is zero. But now notice that there is a reflection in the X. 
So now the vertex for this one is actually at zero, zero vertex. Um, the starting point is zero, zero. And now it just basically reflected it along there. We didn't have that happening, or at least we didn't see it happening with the quadratic because everything was squared and the parabolas you know, are very symmetrical in this way. Um, here, okay, you clearly see that it, there is a reflection. And then as you get bigger, so again, it will just compress it in the X in that direction. So that's pretty neat. So now my Y, so notice if I made it negative in here, okay, so look what would happen, okay, in this direction. So it would make it even further out, okay, and if I made it positive, okay, so it goes in this direction, and you can play around and see um, for both of these. Okay, so now let's reset these back, so I'll put it back at 1, okay, put this back at 1, so it's, we're dealing with the same thing. And now in terms of your H and your K, we know that that just simply translates things around. So notice, okay, this is gonna be moving it to the right, to the left, all right, and this is gonna be going it up and moving it down. So it's pretty awesome to be able to see and then using a tool like decimals, I mean, it's amazing that you can just kind of play around and get huge amounts of intuition into this. Now, is there any difference with all the other ones, turns out that there is no difference. Then that's why when you study these translations, you typically take just a few parent functions um, and then you try to see, all right, do I understand these compression stretches that I have in the horizontal, so in the inputs, okay, in the vertical, and then, you know, in terms of the translations and then any reflections that might happen. So if I take, for instance, these this absolute value, um, it's going to be exactly the same thing. So if I go back here, and let's say I'll put the um, absolute value within here. Okay, so this would be, so let's take an absolute of X. All right, so it obviously looks different. And now in here, so that's going to change this whole thing around as well. So A and absolute. All right, and it will be B of x minus h, okay, and then take the absolute right there. So that's what we have there. Now let me reset it all. So let's, the translations will put to zero, and then the rest is to one. So here it is, so it's kind of a symmetrical V, right, that we have. And now notice if I move this thing around, as it gets bigger, all right, stretches it out in the Y, okay, as it gets smaller between zero and one, compresses it this direction, so that's what we see there. The same thing happens, so within, okay, our B, so notice in the X, okay, and there. Now, the beauty is, okay, so that within here, if you make A, for instance, negative, so it, there's a reflection in the Y, and now, let me set this back to one, and then if you take B and you make it negative, okay, notice that it doesn't do anything. Why? Because you have an absolute value. So because it's symmetrical, it just swaps and it kind of looks identical. So it's like the quadratic with the parabola, all right? So the negative and positive, so notice if I put, so it's here, it's negative 3.8, for B, and if I make this positive, it's going to be exactly the same. There you have it, uh, because of the absolute value. Now, for your H and your K, again, the same thing. Notice shifts it left and right, okay? And then for K, moves it up or down. Beautiful. That's what you have there. Um, so this is a super neat tool to be able to see that. And this last one, you know, one over X as a parent, so this one is kind of not the nicest of, of, uh, of graphs, right? So if you recall, if I kind of sketch this, this kind of looked like this. We have kind of asymptotes, um, right, at zero, zero. Um, it blows up, our function blows up because notice that x cannot be equal to zero. So within here, um, you know, what if we were dealing with this? And again, you know, you can think. So it's gonna be compressing and stretching with the A, um, the B itself, again, it's going to be stretch, this, um, uh, stretching or compressing. And then the H and the K is going to be shifting it around, left or right or up and down. Um, that's what you have there.
all right so if i would write this one out so within here in terms of these translations so now if i change this if f of x is equal to one over x all right and now we have so f if i change my input to be b and then x minus okay so this is h so that's my new input okay so i'm basically changing this so that's going to be equal to one over so we have to replace our input okay with that which means it's b and then we have that so that's what we're going to see right there if we want to be able to multiply it by a so where we would be multiplying this by a and if we want to be able to add so here kind of the k so if we want to shift this then we're going to have to do that so it's going to look like that so here's your parent and then here's the family of all the other ones in terms of the translate uh, transform transformations that you can make so it's pretty um, neat okay so that's what you have there so let me put it up there for you so here it is okay i'm going to put one over x so there we have that and now if i just change this up so this is a all right so that's what we have now a and it's going to be multiplying all right so one over now that a if it multiplies you can put it in the numerator if you like and then in the denominator so i'll just put b and then x minus h so that's what you have there and then finally plus your k now let's reset these back up and okay, so it will make a one you know b is one we'll make h zero and my k zero as well so that it just looks exactly the same and now notice this is going to be the stretching all right so that's what you have there okay so that's your a okay or compressing so stretching and compressing that's what we have within here notice the reflection so that's pretty neat so it reflects back in the y um, so that's what you have within here so that's super awesome let me put this back to one so that you can see it might be the same thing you know stretching and compressing and then also reflection in the x so that's what you have within there. So that's that. And then finally, you have your H, which is basically gonna just shift this left, right, left, right, up, down, up, down, up, down. Awesome to be able to see that. You know, if you had to actually draw it by hand, it would have been um, a little bit of a pain in the, in the butt to try to do that. Okay, so now, a um, couple of examples um, for you, okay, and we'll finish up this video. Here's the first example. So, for instance, if this was one of our functions in terms of our parent, and let's say we wanted to do this, so let's walk through it. Okay, so this three, what is it that going to do? It's going to be a compression or a stretch, right, um, in terms of what we have, and that's going to just be in the y. Now here we have to be careful. So whenever you're doing this, make sure you put it in the right form. So let me factor out that negative 0 0.2, which is going to be, I guess, that's what we're gonna have there. All right, so this is um, what we have within our F. Okay, and this is minus three, this is three. So we have this negative, Okay, 0 0.2, so again, compression and stretch, and now in the x, this is going to now shift it over for us in the x, and this is going to shift it for us in the y. All right, so that's what we would be able to see um, within here. So let's take a look. Um, that's one of the first ones that we have. So let me do that quickly for you. All right, so here it is so what we had so our a is 3 our b is negative 0 0.2 let's put that in there so notice the 3 notice the stretch out okay that we have in there so that's what we said so the b is negative 0 0.2 so we're going to see a reflection because of the negative now it's a reflection in the x 
and then it's 0 0.2, all right? So what happens is this, this will kind of get compressed within, okay? So it kind of pushes this back in. So that's what we have in our X. Now our H and our K, so that is a five and a, neg and a negative three. So we have, so this is a five, and then our K is negative three. So it just shifts it over, all right? So five on the X and then down on that. And here is another example for you. So for example, if we had this and our parent was one over X, and now what would this do? So we have a, a negative 0.5, so that's right there. Now again, we're gonna have to worry about this. Uh, this is one of the tricks, I guess, when you're trying to remember, um, don't forget to put it in the right format so that you have your B. And then, you know, so this is my A, my B, my H, and then my K. So I have a negative five in here, so there's gonna be a reflection, um, and then there's gonna be a stretch, you know why? There's going to be in the X, so another reflection. So that's gonna be nice to see because you're gonna have a double reflection, so I might return it back. And then you have a shift by two and two. Okay, so I'll prepare that for you as well. So there you have it, so that's that. So the first one, so we said this was gonna be negative five. So notice the reflection and then kind of the stretch out. Okay, so that's what we have there. Now within the B, so this was supposed to be another reflection, it's gonna be minus one. Okay, so notice it brings it back because it reflects it again in the X um, and it keeps it just at one. All right, so notice, so here's the positive and here's the negative side. Okay, so those are the reflections that we have there. Now my H, um, so that I had, so we're gonna be shifting these so that's two and two. So this was two, this was two. So it just shifts it over by two, two. Um, so that zero, zero, kind of your central point to your parent is gonna get shifted over. All right, so that brings it towards the end of this video. I hope that it gives you a good perspective. And now, not just for quadratics, you notice that you can do these transformations um, for pretty much any um, function that you have. But when you're starting this off in grade 11 or when you're starting to learn functions, it's wise to learn it on kind of the simpler ones like these, you know, the quadratic, the square root, the absolute value, one over X. And then you can try to make them a little bit more complicated to be able to see, you know, what will actually happen. Okay, thanks for watching everyone. We'll see you uh, in future videos. Bye.